400, 401. What's up everybody? If you've ever opened your Fire Driver app for the first time and you think to yourself, oh my God, where do I even start? I have a solution for you. Down in the description, I have a link to a document that we're gonna cover step by step to set up your Fire Driver for the very first time. One thing I do wanna iterate in this video, this is not a Rager specific video. This video is relevant to any of your applications that are running a Fire Driver controller. While I got you on the line though, if you are in the market for a Fire Driver, check out econiccycles.com for everything Fire Driver. If you also use the keyword Voltron 5 at checkout, you will save 5% on your entire order. Anyway, let's get this thing in the shop. Let's get it tuned. All right, guys. So here we are. You're probably in a similar situation. You got the far driver installed. You, you got your throttle installed. You got the on off switch and all the things done. But now that your far driver is installed and connected, now what? Next thing you should do is go down to the description and open the link. It's got a document in there, the one I talked about earlier, that's gonna go through the steps that we're gonna go through in this video. In this video, we're gonna get you rolling, but there's a plethora of other steps that you can take to make your bike faster, more responsive, or to act a certain way, depending on the riding characteristics that you're expecting, whether that's street or off-road. But anyway, let's get into the document. Let's get into these steps. The first thing you gotta do is go into the app store, whether or not you're using an iPhone or an Android phone, go ahead and get the Far Driver app. It looks like this, download that. The first thing you're gonna have to do is put in your email address. It's gonna ask you what that is, and then you're gonna hit submit. What it's gonna do, it's gonna send you an email, and it's gonna have a six digit code in there. Once you get the email from Far Driver, take that six digit code, put it in the app, and then you're gonna hit registering. And that'll allow the controller to to bind with your app so that you can make the changes that you're gonna to wanna to make specifically to your controller. We have our controller is connected to our app. And the next thing we get to do is go to the communications tab. And I have a screen here that I'm working on as I'm speaking to you guys so that I can project this up so that we can kind of go through this together. So what we're gonna do is you're going to connect your controller to the app. So you're gonna see here, you're gonna see one Q. So you're gonna hit that and you're gonna to wanna to connect. So connect right here, boom. And now it's connected. Then go over here to connected, click here to bound. So click that and it'll say bound controller and then it'll have a serial number, hit bound. And then it'll say bound device. So you're good to go. Now you're able to make changes to the controller through the app. So now that we're bound and the app is connected to the controller, we're gonna go over to the Paris tab on the bottom left of the screen. You're gonna open up the NBLE setting right there. This is kind of the more, the more advanced setting. A couple of things you need to know here is the pole pairs of your motor. And in the document, it says what the pole pairs are for very common motors. If you don't know what your pole pairs are, Google your motor and find out what the pole pairs are. Or if you know what the magnet count is, you can take that number, divide it by two, and that'll give you your pole pairs. Anyway, but you need to know your pole pairs, you need to know what your voltage is on your battery, and you need to know what your max line current is. In addition to knowing all that stuff, you need to know what your low voltage cutoff is. So if you're running a 72 volt battery, a 60 volt battery, a 48 volt battery, you need to tell the controller what the safe level is to protect that battery so that it stops producing power so it doesn't damage your components. So I'm, in my application, we're gonna start here at the top under the parameters section. I have a QS165 motor. That's a five pole pair motor. So if you have a different one, just click on the five right there or the number that's present when you start up the controller and select how many pole pairs your motor has. Mine has five, so I'm keep it at five. My voltage is 72 volts and we'll just keep that at 72. If yours is different, you can just touch it and input whatever yours is. So my max line current for my battery is 240 amps, but this controller is only good to take 200. So I'm gonna make mine 200. It's already set at 200. So we'll just leave that there. If you have a issue with your motor spinning the wrong direction, if you look over here at the motor direction one or zero, you will get a selection of zero or one. Just pick the one if you want your motor to go forward on like a dirt bike application. But if you are mounting your motor in a different configuration, say your chain is on the opposite side or you're running a four wheeler or whatever your application is, you can use that one and zero and that'll change the direction in which your shaft spins. So, and then after we do all that in the very top section, we're gonna go down to protect our 
low voltage protect right now is set at 61.1. I'm just gonna go with what the document says. And I'm reading here, 72 volt battery, the low protect is 63.1. So I'm gonna go with that, 63.1, okay. And then that's gonna be pretty much everything that I have to do before we do the auto learn process. So I'm gonna scroll back up to the top, make sure everything looks good. And then I'm gonna hit save down here on the bottom, save. You'll hear, you'll hear a beep beep, boom. So now that we're there, the settings have been saved. Now we can hit the return to simple mode at the bottom of the screen. And then I'm gonna go over to the graph. So our graph right here, and this is where we're gonna implement the auto learn feature. On the very bottom, you're gonna see auto learn. And when you do this auto learn, the way I have always done it or that I have been coached to do it, which is the best way, is to remove the chain from the motor so that the controller gets an accurate reading of the RPMs that the motor is turning without having to turn a mass, if you will. So anyway, we're gonna go to auto learn, enter self learning status, we'll hit enter. Now, listen to that tone. Beep, beep, beep. That's the auto learn signature tone so that let you know that you're an auto learn. From here, I'll take the throttle and what I would do is have your bike up on a stand somewhere safe, because this is gonna spin really fast, forwards and backwards, and it's gonna do some things. Anyway, just be in a safe area when you're doing this. So, I'm gonna full send the throttle, and here we go. Okay, so, we ha I held the throttle down, it went forward, it went back. You, got, you can watch the gauges. Sometimes if you're doing this for the first time, your motor might sound a little gravelly, but as the auto loan process is taking place, it's kind of figuring out where it is and it's gonna smooth out that motor. We did get a throttle issue, which once it verified that the system was okay, it removed the X and it gave me a green check, which is bueno, so good on that. And one other thing here, guys, after you've done the auto learn process is recommended that you do is go over to the graphs page and look over here at the motor stop. Under that, you have a gauge and it says throttle. Mine says zero slash 0 0.79. So what we wanna do is go over to our parameters. I'm gonna open up the NBLE tab and I'm gonna look at what my throttle is set at. Right now, my low throttle is set at 0.97. And per the document that I'm reading off of for this, it says that the throttle low should be 0.1 to 0.15 over what that initial number was on the graph, which was 0.79. So 0.79, you add 0 0.1, 0 0.89, 0 0.9 ish. We'll go over to the parameters. What did I say that it was? 0.9. So it, it figured it out. And what this does is it just eliminates dead space in your throttle as you're giving the motor the, the, the twist, right? And sometimes you might not have to do anything to the low throttle setting, just depends on kind of your motor and your controller. But anyway, something to keep in mind. Also too, if you have a motor and you are, have a temp sensor, not all motors have a temp sensor. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna go back to simple mode and then I'm gonna open up the graph. Right here where it says MOS temperature and motor temperature, those two numbers should be really close. Sometimes you're gonna get a MOS temperature that's gonna be you know, the ambient temperature of wherever you are now, but your motor temperature is gonna be you know, 100 degrees difference. That's not good, that's not what we want. So if that is your case, then just head over back to the parameters, go back into the advanced settings, open the temperature sensor tab, and scroll through these. There's seven of them in here. Scroll through these and then check back on your graph page to see if that MOS temperature and that engine temperature are really close, you know, within a degree or two. If the disparity is large between the two numbers, then you're probably on the wrong setting. So just troubleshoot with that. It all depends on your motor but, and the sensor that it has, but something to keep in mind. But anyway, so that's the base tune, guys. We got it running. I'm gonna put the chain back on it. Let's take it outside. Let's ride it. Let's see what kind of speeds we get just on a base tune. Anyway, let's get on the road. 